one of the uh, things I wanted to tell you about was my experience in medicine when I was younger, in my late teens, early 20s. I went to a medical assisting school in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, and in, in Arizona, at least during those years back in the late 70s, um, the scope of practice for a medical assistant was a little broader than it is here. In fact, we could work and do quite a few procedures and so forth that um, uh, a regular nurse would do as long as we were under the supervision of a physician, which I was. Um, and I worked out in a remote desert medical clinic that even had an emergency room. And out there I witnessed birth and death. I uh, assisted during a woman's heart attack where she eventually died. And it was pretty profound experiences. And I also worked for a neurologist uh, in California, um, and I worked for a, an internal medicine practice here in Lansing many years ago. And I've also, um, again, in California, I worked for this holistic practitioner who was a um, doctor of osteopathy, a DO, who did nothing but um, hands-on osteopathic manipulation. He prescribed no medicines, even though he could, and he did cranial sacral therapy, which some of you are familiar with, and he also did homeopathy, and it was really um, amazing to watch his technique and skill and some of the conditions he was able to turn around. It was just a phenomenal experience. So all in all, I've had a, a terrific experience in medicine, and um, I have a great respect for the medical community. I think a lot of times when you're an alternative health care practitioner, that isn't always so. And I really want to um, encourage you to avoid medical bashing. Uh, a lot of times, many of you are... Um, as I am, like to do things in the so-called natural way, and um, and that's all well and good. But let me tell you, if you have a heart attack or you have um, a car accident um, or some other traumatic injury or um, you know a, a brain tumor or something, you know you're really glad that there are medical professionals out there. So let's uh, let's be kind. Um, it was a powerful experience, like I said. I. Uh, um, I learned a lot, and that's how I felt when this class came about. I felt qualified to teach the class because I did have a decade of experience in that field, and um, and I'm fascinated by medicine. There's a, there's a lot of good to it, just as I am fascinated by my massage therapy. Um, medicine works um, on evidence-based uh, research. In other words, uh, people in the medical field are not going to do anything that there isn't research to back up the fact that there might be a benefit to that uh, practice or technique or medicine or whatever they're, they're doing. And massage therapists, on the other hand, while we have some research that's being done in our field and have had for about the past decade, um, it's, I see a lot of massage therapists making claims that are maybe based in truth somewhere, um, but they aren't necessarily research-based. And I think you're going to find as we become licensed, um, or you may be doing this video at a time when we already are licensed, we're right on the verge of that right now, um, we're going to step more into the medical community, most likely, and uh, we have to be careful about some of the claims that we make. One of my favorites to point out is a lot of massage therapists will say that, um, well, massage removes toxins. Well, I've always wondered what those toxins were, and the closest thing that I could figure out uh, was that it was the removal of lactic acid out of the muscles, particularly after exercise. Well, um, I will include this link um, on your written handout that, that accompanies this video, but um, there was recently research to prove that massage therapy does not help with the removal of lactic acid post-exercise, those famous toxins that we talked about. Um, and so uh, you have to be careful on what you say. Um, another one that comes to mind is, um, I read it on a lot of massage therapist websites, that massage uh, alleviates depression and while you know when I'm kind of blue yeah I, I would love I'd love to have massage done it's uh, you know you and I all you all know that it feels great but when we're talking about true clinical depression um, there the studies were mostly done on depression and massage by the touch research Institute at the University of Miami also you'll find the link on your uh, written handout for that but um, most of the studies uh, that I could find uh, were done on postpartum women that's women who have just had their babies now, women who have just had their babies are very prone to depression, and they have a very unique hormone profile um, at that time in their, uh, that phase of the postpartum uh, after having a baby. And um, so to just say that massage removes, alleviates depression, yes, in fact, that's somewhat true, but uh, you're talking about the research that was done on a very small subgroup of people, those who were postpartum uh, mothers. 
and so we're just making a sweeping assumption that massage removes or alleviates depression. Um, if you said that to a doctor who went in and looked for the research, and they said, well, yeah, I mean, you know, what are you talking about here? It, it, it can help. I, there's some evidence to show that it alleviates postpartum depression, but nothing about just true all, overall clinical depression. So be careful how you say things and the claims that you make in massage therapy. I think it's important as we kind of move into the mainstream more um, to make sure that whatever we claim has some research to back it up. And there are some good sites for research right now. The Touch Research Institute, the University of Miami, again, is an excellent resource uh, to find massage therapy research. Um, in your professional journals, there will be articles written about people who do research. And that research may be interpreted by the magazine, so it's not the actual research. But you can glean some uh, pretty good ideas there on what is and what is not true in massage therapy. And um, it's important to stay current to keep up on what the, what, um, the current research is. Um, so I think there's a great value to research in the, in the uh, massage therapy profession and that we can uh, sort of justify our existence uh, in the medical field should we tend to get more medicalized, as I assume we will. Um, also, doing research in massage can be a little flaky. Uh, there's so many variables. Let's say that you're going to do a study on massage therapy for back pain and you have... Um, Ten people laying out on tables. You have ten massage therapists who are going to, part and they're all going to participate in the study. And you say, okay, let's try everybody do five effleurages up the back, five effleurages down the back, some petrissage around the hip and spine area for five minutes, and let's see what happens. Well, the problem with massage therapy is you have uh, some some variables such as what about the hand pressure of the massage therapist. Uh, what about the speed that the massage therapist does the techniques? What about the massage therapist's rapport with the person on the table? Is this somebody that they know and there's a trust bond there where the person's going to feel more comfortable and relax? Or is it somebody they've never met before? Um, is, uh, how fast is the massage therapist moving their hands when they're applying these techniques? Um, how much experience has the practitioner had? Are these very, very highly skilled practitioners with very sensitive hands? Or are these... Um, people who have maybe uh, just freshly graduated out of massage school. So there's a lot of variables. It makes it very difficult to get real solid research. Um, and research is not cut and dry. It's not cause and effect necessarily, but it can show trends and possibilities that it's, uh, you know, for instance, that massage, it's, it's shown that it's probable that massage can help in reducing postpartum depression. Since there's research based on that, yeah, you could, you could say that massage if you're making a website for yourself and you want to list the benefits of massage, say that massage um, has been shown to reduce um, postpartum depression in uh, women. Um, make sure whatever claims you make, though, are backed up by some research, and there is going to be more and more research done, so you'll have a lot more to look up. The Internet is a great resource for research, as you're probably finding out. Um, so just be cautious in how you present the claims about massage therapy. Um, in future lecture topics, we're going to talk to a researcher to see how research is done, things you have to look at when you're reading a research study. And um, we'll be uh, talking about research a lot more in this class, but I just wanted to just give this very quick lecture to you to kind of open your eyes about the possibility of massage research and the value of research in massage therapy and, um, and be, to be careful about the claims you make. Thank <laughs> you.